What if you could get personal mentorship from a genius investor who put early money into Twitter, Postmates, Uber, and is so popular online that he basically has a cult following? Whether you want to get rich, become smarter, live healthier, the Almanac of Naval Ravikant has the advice that you're looking for. It's a collection of extremely compact and timeless wisdom from Naval Ravikant, an angel investor and founder of AngelList. He spent a lifetime reading philosophy, math, science, history, and distilling everything that he's read and learned into concise, very actionable advice. And now Eric Jorgensen has taken all the advice Naval has shared over the years and distilled it into one book. Now I absolutely flew through this book. I read the whole thing in two days over a couple of sittings because it was so good. And here's seven of the things that I found most impactful when reading it. Number one, seek wealth, not money or status. Wealth is having assets that earn while you sleep. Money is how we transfer wealth. And status is your place in the social hierarchy. Now let's say that you had $10,000. You could spend that $10,000 on a trip. You'd get some great photos, you'd have a lot of fun, but that $10,000 would be gone. You could also take that $10,000 and buy a used car. That car is gonna get more valuable, but you could still resell it in the future and get some of that money back. So you haven't lost the entire 10 grand. Or you could take that 10 grand and put it into something simple like Wealthfront, where it's just invested in a bunch of index funds and that might compound at 7% year over year. So next year, that $10,000 could be worth 10,700. And year after that, it could be worth 11,449. We often think that being wealthy means getting a huge paycheck every year. CEOs who are paid $500,000 a year are wealthy. But if that salary went away, if they got fired, they would suddenly have no income. That's why Naval defines wealth as being able to earn money while you sleep. If you only have a salary, then you always have to keep trading time for money. So what are some of those income producing assets that you can turn that salary into? Well, like I said, one easy one is just investments, right? Index funds, Wealthfront, Betterment, any one of those is a good basic way to start earning money while you sleep from income that you've already earned. You could also get into real estate, doing Airbnbs or buying houses and long-term renting them out. This is something my wife and I have gotten really interested in recently. You could invest in businesses or even start a business. That's a great way to take an amount of money and turn it into a much larger amount. Or you could even build your own products, create side hustles and passive income, something I talked about in another video recently on how one side hustle I started earlier this year has already made over $400,000 in revenue. If you do enjoy learning about that kind of stuff, be sure to subscribe too, because I do a lot of videos related to entrepreneurship, side hustles, passive income, and you're gonna wanna make sure you get those as well. Okay, but you might still be asking, well, how do I get the opportunity to invest in income earning assets? How do I get that high income in the first place? Well, that takes us to the next lesson in the book which is what Naval says, the most important skill for becoming rich is being a perpetual learner. Now, what does he mean by perpetual learner? Well, when I was in college, I studied philosophy. It was a lot of fun, but not very useful. I knew it wasn't gonna get me a job. So instead, I taught myself marketing on the side. And I was primarily doing that through working on my personal site. From learning about marketing on my own, I was able to start my marketing agency, Growth Machine. And when I started that, I had to teach myself how to build an agency, how to run a team, how to do sales, like all of these new things. That's now a multi-million dollar business, but only because I was able to perpetually keep learning the things I had to learn. Now I'm here trying to learn how to grow a YouTube channel. Learning is a skill like anything else, and you get better at it the more you practice learning new things. If you want to get rich, develop really, really valuable skills, then you have to never stop learning new things. So how do you get better at self-education? Well, I have another article called The Sandbox Method, which is all about how you can create a really powerful environment to teach yourself new skills. And it's what I've used in all these situations to pick something up really quickly, and you might find that really useful. But the best way is to just practice. Pick something you want to learn. Start watching videos, reading books, asking experts, see what works and what doesn't for you for picking up something really quickly. But maybe you're not sure what you should learn, especially if one of your goals is to become wealthy, build a business. Well, Naval has advice for that too, because what he says is learn how to build and learn how to sell. If you can do both, you will be unstoppable. Buying index funds and investing in the stock market is fine, but it's not likely to actually get you very rich because it's so slow and because you're limited in how fast your money can grow there. If you really wanna get wealthy, you need to find a way to create your own products and businesses that can get you much more than just a 7% annual return. And a lot of people stress out about having a good idea for a business or product, but ideas are not enough because if you can't build the thing that you have an idea for, and if you can't sell the thing that you have an idea for, it doesn't matter how many great ideas you have, you can't do anything with them. Now, building is a really broad term. It could be anything from learning how to code, learning how to design, how to write, how to make videos. Here we are. And selling is a similarly broad term. It doesn't mean that you have to learn how to smile and dial and call people. It could mean doing marketing. It could mean making videos again, right, to promote the products you're doing. What you want to do is find a way of building that you enjoy and that resonates with you and a way of selling 
that is going to, again, resonate with something that you care about getting better at. So find a way to build new things in the world and a way of selling them. The next lesson Naval has for us is that the direction you're heading in matters more than how fast you move, especially with leverage. Picking the direction you're heading in for every decision is far, far more important than how much force you apply. An analogy that's helpful here is a big ship, right? Imagine the Titanic. They knew they were going to hit the iceberg, but they didn't have enough time to turn to avoid it. Your life is also kind of like a big ship, and the direction you point it in is going to determine where you end up in five to 10 years. Going fast in the wrong direction is way less helpful than going slowly in the right one. So spend a lot of time thinking about what you want to aim at before you immediately just start doubling down on going as fast as possible. It's also worth remembering that when you're young, your ship is smaller. It's more maneuverable, you can turn it quicker. Once you've got a mortgage, kids, dog, your ship is bigger, it's harder to turn, it's harder to make changes. One thing I'm really grateful I did is I tried out at least three or four careers before I turned 24, and that gave me some really good ideas about what I actually wanted to work on and double down on for the next five, 10, 20 years. And if you're having trouble deciding, you know, what of those choices to make, what things to focus on, well, Naval has advice for that too. Because what he says is, if you have two choices to make and they're relatively easy choices, take the path more difficult and more painful in the short term. Now, this is an extremely powerful decision-making heuristic that is guaranteed to improve your life. Often when we're confronted with two choices, we're tempted to pick the easier one over the harder one because we're prioritizing short-term comfort and happiness over long-term benefit. It's probably always gonna feel better to eat chips and play video games than to go to the gym because the chips and video games are immediately satisfying, whereas the gym is only gonna pay off over a year or two of repetition. So what Naval has given us is a tool to never stop improving, to make sure that we always choose the gym over over video games, where it's just very simple of a thing to keep in your head. That if you're confronted with two choices and you wanna pick one, but you kind of feel like you should pick the other one, or one is the easy choice and one's the tougher choice, take the harder route. It's gonna be better for you in the long term. It's gonna point your ship in a better direction. There's another quotation from Jersey Gregor that Naval likes to invoke, which is, easy choices, hard life. Hard choices, easy life. <laughs> Make the hard choices and your life is going to be better. Speaking of hard choices, there's another quotation from Naval that I really, really love that's in here. Desire is a contract you make with yourself to be unhappy until you get what you want. Desiring something implies believing that your life will somehow be better once you get it. So as soon as you let desire become a driving emotion in your life, you're choosing to be less happy now on the dubious notion that when you get or achieve this thing, you will magically be happy forever, which is really the case. But as Naval points out, true happiness is only possible when we stop desiring something else, when we can just be happy in this moment here and now. And speaking of desire, there's one last quotation I really like, because if you're a highly motivated person, it's very easy to get jealous of other people. And Naval has some good advice for that as well. One day I realized with all these people I was jealous of, I couldn't just choose little aspects of their life. If you're not willing to do a wholesale, 24-7, 100% swap with who that person is, then there is no point in being jealous. Now this has become a mantra for me, for whenever I start to get jealous of someone by picking out a part of their life. Oh, he's making so much money doing that thing. Oh, he has so many YouTube followers. Like, oh, his business is so big. This is a very helpful reminder that you can't pick one part of someone's life to be jealous of. You can only be jealous of someone if you'd 100% swap your entire life with theirs. And as soon as I remember that, it really helps mitigate any of those feelings of jealousy. Because there are parts of other people's lives that I might want, but I don't want all of someone else's life, and I suspect you really don't either. So if you can keep this in mind, it helps a lot with making sure that any professional jealousies that creep in are easily assuaged. Now, there's so much wisdom in this book, and I already know it's one that I'm gonna come back to again and again. And you can see I've got you know, tons of highlights here. Another book that's really loaded with life advice is The 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene. Some of the advice is questionable, but there's a lot of great life lessons in there, and you can learn more about them by clicking up here. Uh, where I go over my life lessons from that book. And also, if you wanna learn more about my reading philosophy, how I choose what to read, and why you shouldn't try to read 100 books per year, that video should be right here. And that goes into a bit more of how to pick what to read and why you shouldn't just try to read as many books as humanly possible. And of course, make sure you pick up a copy of the book. Uh, it's phenomenal, it's only $3 on Kindle, so that's a no-brainer. And I'm sure that you're gonna get a lot of value from reading it yourself. All right, thanks for joining, and I hope to see you in the next video.